Well, this was uh, what we were working on last time. Uh, we had this theorem. Uh, this, by the way, is called. This is the left diagnosis of the puncture palm. Did, uh, did Matt talk about punctures last time? Okay. So this is left exactness. Notice if you start left exact, of course, means exact on this side. And the important thing, the uh, leftness is where it ends up. So if you start with this exact sequence, where the slice is not necessarily onto, then you get this left exact sequence. Um, and this is the, uh, uh, the contravariant case. That is, it reverses the order. So if you start with this exact sequence, so this is all in the perfect on this zero one one, you get the this one right here. The last time um, we showed the exactness, uh, or I'm sorry, we showed that uh, the map induced by F is uh, onto. So proving. Second statement. <clears throat> Proving this one. Uh, we showed uh, the map induced by a plot of All right, that's kind of where we went. Um, so, what about? Uh, let's now do that. The uh, image. G bar is contained from a bar. Hmm. Well, uh, for this one right here, notice that um, let me well, let's let's recall how these maps were. Probably a good thing here. Uh, Uh, you know, the, the right way, not the left, the right. I mean, we are proving that. Oh, we're, we're, uh, we're trying to, so we have that this is exact, and we're trying to prove this. We've already proved that this is on to. Uh, we want to show that, now we want to show the image of chief bars containing the curl of that bar. I think we proved that chief bar is one to one. That's what I have my guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> I looked at the sequence. I did something wrong. Anyway, we uh, proved that G bar is one to one. Is that what y'all are picking on me about? Yeah. You are correct. Yes, that's right. That's what we showed last time. Now, we want to show this, correct? Let's review how these math work. So if you have some homomorphism C to D, this goes, how do I get from B to D? Well, we have to use this hookup here. Um, right. So I need to go from B to C first. And then, um, B to C first and then C to D. And likewise, if I start with some gamma here, it goes from B to D. This goes to gamma yeah, down here. And this is the map induced by, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is the map induced by G and this is the map induced by F. Right. Now, um, So let's suppose that we start with a homomorphism from C to D. And let's suppose that we do this twice. Consider um, first we do E bar, and then we do F bar. 
Well, of course, this is at bar. And what does this map do? It goes here. And now we induce by at bar. And this is. But what is F composed? Uh, what is F than G? That's zero because of the exactness of this original thing right here. So uh, the image of G bar can be in the term of that form. That's always kind of the easier one, I think. Um, now let's uh, let's do the other containment here. Um, uh, let's see. Let's do this container here. Um, now, to this end, I'm, I'm going to just actually build a function. Let me, let me kind of, the best thing to do, I think, at this point is kind of look at it and assess uh, what we need to do. So let's let let Ada uh, be in the kernel of that bar. And so uh, this means that when you do F and then you do Ada, you get zero. Uh, now, let me draw the following diagram. Uh, here's F, here's our friend F, and here's G. This is Ada. Now, Ada is in the kernel of uh, F bar. We need to show that it's in the image of G bar, right? So what we need to do is we need to be able to argue, we need to show there exists, uh, let's call it uh, gamma. Uh, in the uh, <clears throat> we need to be able to find gamma uh, in here such that G bar of gamma is equal to A, right? And of course, this means that um, gamma g is equal to a. Right. So, in other words, what we need to do is we need to find a gamma from here to here that makes this diagram commit, right? Do g and gamma is equal to a. So, if we can complete this diagram, that means that uh, doing g the gamma is a which means G bar of gamma zeta, and then we're happy. Everybody okay with that? So that's kind of our goal here. So to this end, let's just kind of try to write it down. Uh, now, what we know about the original sequence is, is G is on to, uh, So, if G is on to, uh, that means that C is isomorphic to B mod uh, the kernel of G. Right? This is just the first isomorphism theorem. And then right here is just the observation that in the sequence here, uh, the image of F is equal to the kernel of G. Right? So I can think of B mod kernel of G. Is that exactly equal to B mod the image of F? Because the kernel of G and the image of F are the same thing. Right? So let us 
So I think what we can kind of reduce is so what we need to have is consider consider B goes to D. This is eta from our diagram here. And here is G. Uh, and G actually goes to, um, actually, let me kind of spread this out a little bit. Actually, B, um, G takes B to C, and this is isomorphic. I'm going to call this B, B mod, what do I want to call it? Um, kernel G. And what we need to do is we need to build this gamma. It goes right back up here. Now I'm actually going to do it from uh, B mod kernel G. So I want to try to build something that goes from B mod the kernel of G uh, into D. Uh, well, let's see. How does this got to work? My input has got to be a cosec that looks like this, and my output has got to it's got to spit out something that's in B, or I'm sorry, in D, uh, what do you want to do here? And of course, you got to make the diagram for you. So any, any ideas? Remember, this is mine. So if it ain't easy, don't do it. What's the best way to make this be an element of D? Uh, let's just cross our fingers if that works, right? I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this coset representative B, and the best way I can think to get over here, and I'll probably make the diagram for me, is just apply this. <clears throat> now, uh, what's the what's the first thing that I have to worry about? Yeah, that's right. I, this is this is always. I mean, the first question is: Is this a function in the first place? Because my input is of course a code set representative here and so if i vary this if i vary this b by something kernel g does it change the output and the answer is no because uh notice that uh if so let's just uh specialize in the case that b is in the kernel of g which is the image of f then Um, a to f a zero because if b is in kernel g then it's in the image of f which means that i can write b as some f of a right but remember a to f is zero right so when i apply uh a to to any uh, B in the kernel of G, then I get the zero element, right? So that means, in general, if B is maybe not necessarily in the kernel, but if I vary this by something in kernel G, it doesn't change the output. So this is well defined. So eta is identically zero on the kernel of G. So uh, our gamma is well defined. Because if I change this concept represented by something in G, it doesn't change the output. Right? So that's that's the real hill to overcome. It's actually fairly easy to show that this is a, an R module homomorphism once you know it's a function. Uh, um, right. <laughs> 
So um, notice uh, Morphism. That's not too difficult to do. Like I said, the hard part showing its function. Um, and the diagram commutes because if B is in B, let's see what happens when I kind of uh, float it right through here. Um, Let me point out this whole thing uh, onto uh, all of this whole composition be project, uh, projection. That diagram should be uh, commutative because uh, if I look at uh, A to B, well, this is equal to um, gamma projection of B. Because So in other words, it's set up to do this. So let me point out for my last look. Yes. Um, are we kind of using, are we kind of assuming that it's an R module homomorphism? We're going to type, like, because you could say, if we're trying to show it's well defined, you could say, oh, it has to differ by an element of B. But then to actually say there are two, two identical coset elements, Back to the same thing, which you have to use. You're right. I am being a little bit sloppy with that. But if you, I took a little shortcut here, but if you write it out, you'll get the same result. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So his complaint is, correct me if I'm wrong, that I, I really sort of showed it as well to find before I showed it as an armadillo homomorphism. Right. But just, just go through and put in a, an arbitrary um, uh, B plus. Uh, <clears throat> Let's say b plus x and b plus y, or right, and uh, you're right. Suppose that you have uh, uh, same uh, b prime, or well, suppose you have uh, b term of g equals uh, b prime plus term of g, and so there exists. X in kernel of G such that um, B minus B prime equals X, according to the process of insane. Now go through the computation to straightforward. Uh, because really what you need here is this A to B, the way this is defined is this A to F of A. And since, and I'm sorry, I erased it, but since A to F is actually in the kernel of this map, which is our uh, Assumption in the beginning, and that'll be the zero homomorphism. So you'll get the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, right, if B is in B, uh, then, uh, right, so what we've shown is this big diagram commutes. That is to say, So what we've shown is eta is equal to pi uh, first and then pi. Right. Now to get the diagram community C, notice that um, pi is equal to uh, doing G and then doing, right? <laughs> and so 
what I really want is I want something right here that makes a diagram commute. I'm going to call this gamma prime. Uh, and I am going to find gamma prime to be uh, I should say uh, phi the gamma. And what I want to commute actually is G and prime eta. So eta is um, gamma pi, which is gamma p g by this observation. But then this guy gamma prime. And so I have this little diagram in here commute, which is what I was doing. Okay. Um, any questions? And so I changed the notation here to gamma prime, but notice that um, uh, there is this gamma prime in home from C to D such that um, G and prime is equal to A, which is internal that. So, uh, kernel of um, <clears throat> see. So the kernel of um, F bar is such. Okay. So what we've shown so far is the exactness of that sequence zero or well, actually, a to b to c to zero gives the uh, exactness of the home sequence. So I want to record this now. Let's do the other direction. And I think this will also help you a little bit with the homework problems you've got for a couple of weeks from now. Now, suppose that for all r modulus d, Uh, we have the exactness of the home sequence uh, is exact. Okay, so we've got that this holds true for every R module, and we need to show <clears throat> yeah, that's that's the goal, right? Now, what this is, if this one's a little bit different, uh. This is just kind of an exercise in picking your D sagaciously, right? So let me see, where do we want to start? Uh, let's start here. I'm going to show the views on here. Um, in this case, Choose, and this is the, the power of the state forward. I, this this holds for any R module D. So in this case, I want to choose D to be. Any guesses that you want to choose here for D? Hmm. How about this? Can anybody, can anybody explain where that came from? What the logic might be? What does it mean? What does it mean for this, this G to be onto right here? What does it mean about the image? 
It, right. Uh, so my goal is, is to show that this G covers all C. And if that were the case, what would that make D? Because, yeah, that's right. It'd be the zero line, right? And so that's kind of that's kind of the logic behind it. Let's see how this helps. Uh, let's let uh, Uh, being projection. So that is to say, tornado of C is C plus M and G. Okay. Now, <clears throat> notice that. Um, well. What do we know about this? Let's consider. So notice my little tornado here is a homomorphism from C to D, right? So it's, it's here. And this should be a homomorphism from uh, B to D, right? Uh, because <laughs> right. Now let me ask you this. What can you say about this homomorphism? Make sure I know what you can say about this homomorphism. Think about what it does. G starts in B. And it goes somewhere. We'll say G of B. And then what does tornado do? It takes that input and it goes to the coset C plus image of G. So what does that what does that mean? This this means this is identical to zero, right? Because what, what tornado does here is it kills everything in the image of G just by definition. So I don't care what the input here is, this kills everything in the image of G, which by definition is. So that means that this function, uh, that means the input gives you zero. But what do you know about G bar? G bar is one to one. But here, G bar of tornado is zero, therefore, Tornado is the zero function, correct? So let me kind of summarize. C, you see my image G is zero function. This implies that every input gives you something in the image of G. Therefore, C is contained in the image of G. Therefore, C equals M to G. And so G is on G. Everybody okay? Okay, any questions? <clears throat> okay, so there's, um, okay, so we've got G is on to. Uh, let's show. That the image of F is contained in the kernel of G. Let's do that. Uh, this one shouldn't be too bad. Uh, in this case, by the way, uh, well, let me let me actually write this down first. This might kind of help help out because. Um, Okay, let me point out that the induced sequence right here is exact. 
So when I do, when I do G bar of this and get some, the new F bar of this, well, this should be zero. This should be the zero function because the sequence is exact. So when I compose G bar and F bar in tandem, I need zero, right? So let me kind of deconstruct this. This is F bar of tornado G, and this G F. <laughs> Right, and what happens? Well, what do I want GF to be? What I'm going for is I want uh, F and G to be zero. Everybody agree with that? That's what I want. So any ideas, what's one way that I could prove that this has to be zero? Notice I have not selected a D yet, and this works for any D. I haven't selected, I haven't selected a, a D or a, a homomorphism, a specific homomorphism for tornado. Any ideas what I might uh, does this inspire anything? What is the D right? Okay, right, right. And in fact, you know what? I'm just gonna forget the flash water. I'm gonna get out a nuclear weapon here, right? So let's let D. You can see, right? And let tornado now it's going from C to C. Any guesses as to what the smart thing to do might here? How about the identity function? All right. So let's let this be the identity on C. So now what we get is zero is the identity on C DF. Therefore, DF is equal to zero. So the uh, image of F is containing thermal G. Well, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, how about the last little bit? This is always the one that's a pain, isn't it? Uh, let's try to carry the kernel of G. Image see what we can get for that one. Uh, you know, it's always funny because you, you, you've you almost got it. So I'm going to do something smooth. You're going to think, oh, Jim's so smart. No, nah, not so smart. Uh, because really, there, there, there's little teardrops staying in my paper, right? Because actually, I guessed first the first time, and then I gave up on myself and tried something else. So I had to mess around a little bit to figure out what to try. With D. Anybody, does the force inspire you to guess what we might try for D here? Right, so I guess, like I said, I guessed right, then I guessed wrong, and then I started mucking around with it a little bit, and I was like, ooh, I guess try it in the first place, now to go back and get it. So let's try this. How about um, how about D equals B minus the image of that? Okay. So, uh, and the, the idea is, I, I want something to kind of happen in the middle here, so I'm going to take B minus the, the image of that and see if I can make hay out of this, because I want to show... I want to show that the kernel of this is contained in this. So I, I'm going to look at B mod the image of F and see if I can get that cold water. Okay, so let me kind of write down what the sequence is now, because I think in this one it probably helps. So now what I've got is I'm specializing to this because it does work for all the C B mod MF into uh, B. B mod in that and uh and finally um A B mod in that. Um and you know what uh there's one thing <laughs> Uh, 
you know, all this stuff is all backwards and screwed around and stuff. There's one place in that exact sequence I've got here. By the way, this is just my G. There's one place because notice I've always picked a homomorphism to help me out. There's only one place that I see that there's an obvious homomorphism. Does anybody see it? I mean, an obvious, maybe perhaps non zero homomorphism. I don't really have a good idea about how to get it from C to B mod in math, right? Given this diagram, I mean, how am I going to do that? And I've got a little more idea how am I get from A to B mod in math, maybe. But really, when you see this, what do you think? Just think about projection here, right? So let So this is the usual projection uh, time of B equals equals it goes to E plus M F. Uh, so let me point out first. Uh, now that I've picked this, uh, notice that f bar of pi, right? So pi lives here. When I do f bar to it, um, this is pi f, which is the zero mile. Because what I do f, is first I do F to something, and now whatever that is at that stage is in the image of F. So when I do pi to it, it kills it, right? So when I do F, now everything at this stage is in the image of F, and then I apply pi, and it goes to zero. Everybody okay with me? So this thing is zero map, and this thing is exact, which means this is in, so pi is in the kernel of that bar, which is the image of G bar. So there exists some tornado at home R C B mod M F such that uh, uh, G bar tornado. Which is, let me write for emphasis here. Okay. So um, let me draw a diagram here. Uh, we have B uh, to B mod M out. Uh, G, G and Notice that this is the content of this last statement here. Pi is G and then uh, tornado. So let's take apart what this means. Uh, so for all X in kernel or G, uh, uh, tornado G of X equals zero, because of course that's zero. And when you plug it into that, you get zero. Uh, therefore, uh, pi of X, which by definition is X plus the image of F, uh, is equal to zero. And so what do we have? Therefore, the kernel of G, which is what I plugged into here, actually gives you the zero coset here, which means it's made in the image of that. And that test. Okay. 
Okay. Any uh, any questions on that? <clears throat> Okay, so let me give you uh, kind of a, another theorem here. Uh, so the, the takeaway, part of the takeaway is if you have a short exact sequence, zero A, B, C, then um, then if you have home in the, uh, if, if you let the second variable vary, then you have zero home, uh, the home sequence is, is left exact. If on the other hand, uh, it's A, B, C, zero, the home, uh, when the variable, when it varies in the first coordinate, uh, you get a short exact sequence. So you don't quite get everything you want, right? Because exact sequences aren't necessarily preserved. But if your sequence is split exact, then you get everything you want in the following sense. Uh, theorem. Uh, so the R models. The following are equivalent. Number one, A, B, C, zero. We have a split exact. Uh, number two, uh, Is splitting side. Oops. Well, I'm on the stage. And this is a part of two bar. And three, zero, and two, home. Uh, C home on B B and the home or A B in a split tag. Well, our lives. Okay, so uh, the upshot is uh, that if you have, if the sequences are actually split exact, then you get what you would hope you had gotten in the first place, right? Everything splits, right? So let's, uh, let me do this. I'm not going to do this probably as efficiently as possible, but because I, I could prove it uh, more economically, I'm going to do a couple of if and only ifs. Um, but I think that that probably um, will help. Uh, actually, um, I take it back. Well, I'm going to do A if and only if B. Yeah, try A if and only if C. It's it's really no different. I did the. I'm going to do the, the covariant one. I'm going to do the one with maps in order here. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, in fact, it makes more of a difference in the previous theorem than it does here. Um, so let's do AF and only B. Uh, so, or actually, let's change my notation. One if and only if two. There we go. So let's do this direction first. So what do we have? We have that this is split exact. 
So we already know. Uh, the zero into home R DA into home R DV into home R DC is itself. Right? We don't need split exactness here anyway. Really, all we need is the exactness of this to give the exactness of this, right? Everybody okay so far? That's the previous theorem. All we really have to do is show that G bar is on to, right? <clears throat> um, and actually, I'm going to go a step further than this. Because I do want to show this split exactly. So we merely need to show there exists H bar from home R DC into home R uh, DV such that. When you do H bar, then you do G bar. This is the identity on uh, home R DC. That'll give you the splitting. So really what we're doing, our, our strategy is to find this H that works, H bar that works its way back here, right? Uh, notice that the composition of these two functions is the identity. That means the G bar is on to. So we get that kind of for free uh, along the way. So that'll give you that it's uh, exact. And in fact, the splitting gives you that it's split exact. So uh, how do we uh, how do we reverse engineer this thing? Um, note that. Yes. This one back. There exists H can C to B such that when you do H and G, this is the identity on C. All right. So we know that already. Uh and so, note that, um, and this is uh, pretty easy to see, uh, GH bar, so if you induce this, is the same thing as G bar H bar, which is the identity on home R means. This is not too difficult to uh, this is not too difficult to uh, uh, work out. And of course, if doing H and doing G is the identity on C, right? Then whenever you, you do this induced to another homomorphism, it just leaves it alone. So this is actually the identity function on home on G C. Okay. Any questions? Okay, uh, so I will do the other direction of this next time. Uh, any, uh, which is, will be pretty short, and then we'll probably finish up. Uh, we'll talk about the role of projectives and injectives, and then we can finish this up pretty quickly. Any, uh, any questions? Questions on this? Yeah, so I advise you to kind of look over the proof because it takes a little while to get used to, right? Picking out the days that we did and all this and thinking about the functions. Uh, practice this and let me know if you've got any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.